Hey what's up guys welcome to another video in which we are going to learn about java queue interface with the help of examples so guys the queue interface of the java collections framework provides the functionality of the queue data structure so guys this is another data structure apart from the stack data structure that we learned previously and to understand it more clearly i have this image for you over here so this is the first element in the queue that can be inserted over here at the front so as you can see this is front now and whenever there is a second element that is added in the queue it gets added over here to the right of the queue and then third element fourth fifth and then there are total sixth elements over here now guys whenever you add more elements it will be added at the end of the queue but whenever you want to remove the elements it will be removed from the starting of the queue so as you can see there is a deletion over here so whenever you delete this element will be deleted and the second element will become the starting of the queue now so next time whenever you remove the element the second element will get deleted and so on the third fourth and fifth will get deleted over here but whenever you are adding the elements it will be added at the end of the queue so guys this is the basic functionality of the queue now guys this is the interface so we can have different classes that implement the queue interface so we have first is array dq then we have linked list and we have priority queue as well so guys to keep it simple in this video we are going to use the linked list for now as the examples so basically we are going to check some of the methods of the linked list so let me just move to the id i'll just remove these lines of code now so what we can do is we can use the queue interface over here so we have queue so as you can see we have the queue interface that is present in the java.util.queue package over here and over here the data type we will have as integer to keep it very simple we are going to see the functionality of the queue that works on the first in first out manner so guys we are going to have the object name that is queue1 over here and we are going to provide a new we will say linked list as linked list is one of the classes that implements this queue interface now inside this linked list we are going to add the elements so guys the very first method that is add it inserts the specified element into the queue and also we have offer as well which inserts the specified element into the queue so basically we can use either add or we can use offer so let me just move to the id and we will use both the methods over here so we have queue1 dot add let's say the first is the one integer and let's say we add another element over here we say q1 dot and instead of using add we will use offer over here and we have two over here so guys we have these two elements i'll just copy this and paste this over here to add more two elements now so we'll put three and we'll put four now let's print this q so we have q content is and then we can have the q object over here that is q1 let me just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see q content is 1 2 3 4 in the sequence in which we added all these elements so guys basically add and offer can be used in order to add the elements in the q now we have the element which refers the head of the queue so guys basically this the first element that we have that is the head of the queue so what i am going to do over here is i am going to provide the print statement and i'll say first element is and then we can provide queue that is q1 dot element so this element method that is being used with the help of this q1 object it is going to return the element that is at the front of the queue so basically it is going to return 1 that is because it is at the start of the queue let me just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see queue content is 1 2 3 4 first element is 1 there is another method that is called peak which returns the head of the queue it returns null if it is empty so basically there is a difference guys whenever you using the element it also returns the head of the queue but it will throw an exception if it is empty so what i will do is i will use the empty method first so we can use q1 over here dot as you can see we have the third method over here it says clear so after clearing this let me just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see Q content is one, two, three, four. But since we cleared the queue 
using the clear method there was a java util no such element exception that's because we are now trying to access the front element of the queue by using the dot element method so guys it is throwing an error but let's say we don't have the exception handling code over here in that case instead of using the element method we can use the peak method in order to return the head of the queue but even if it is empty that is if the Q is empty it will return null so basically i'm going to remove this element now over here so we have instead of this element we will provide peak so let me just save this file now and try running this code so as you can see first element is null so it is not throwing an error but it is checking whether the queue is empty or not and if it is empty it is going to return null so guys it is safe to use peak over here when you are not doing exception handling but in case if you are doing exception handling you can also use the element method over here in order to get the head of the queue now guys we also have the remove method which returns and removes the head of the queue throws exception if it is empty we also have poll that returns and removes the head of the queue it returns null if it is empty so basically what i am going to do is instead of having q1 dot peak we can have poll over here so we can have q1 dot poll so basically we have cleared the queue so it is going to return null that's because the queue is empty right now so as you can see first element is null but let's say i don't clear it so i'll just comment out this line and i'll just save this file and try running this code now so in order to get the first element we can use the poll so as you can see first element is one but guys this poll element is also removing the element and returning it so let us now print the content of the queue after we have executed this q1 dot poll so i'll just copy this and paste this over here and we just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see the first element was removed and it was returned as one and then the queue content is two three four that's because using this poll the first element was removed and now the head of the queue is two so the same thing we can print by using the peak method as well so over here we are going to print we have updated first element is and then we will provide queue over here q1 dot peak so this is going to return the element that is at the start of the queue i'll save this file and try running this code so as you can see updated first element is 2 over here that's because we have removed the first element by using the q1 dot poll and guys in this way you can easily use the q data structure over here based on the requirements guys if you notice when we provide the object name q1 followed by dot as you can see there are multiple more methods which you can use based on your requirements so it depends on your java program it depends on your requirements what you want to implement and accordingly you can use these different methods so guys practice on your own so that on different inputs you get different outputs of the java program please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well the next video that we are going to talk about is java priority queue class with the help of examples so stay tuned